In our medical moment, April is Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Month. Now, approximately 54,000 people in the United States will be diagnosed with a head or neck cancer this year. We're here with Jenna Town. She's a board certified physician assistant to learn more about this. Good morning, Jenna. How Good are morning. You? I'm well. How are you? I gotta be honest. I'm fine. Thank you. I, <laughs> I have to be honest. We don't hear a lot about head and neck cancer. So I mean, yes. it's not top of the list when it comes to top of mind awareness. Yeah. What are these head and neck cancers? Who do they affect? So head and neck cancers affect about 4% of the United States population. Um, more commonly males, those greater than 50 years of age. Head and neck cancers include the thyroid gland, the voice box, throat, mouth, okay. nose, salivary glands, sinuses, a lot of skin cancers, kind of just clavicles and up. Okay, clavicle from the from the shoulders up basically, yep. right? Head and from the, neck. the head and neck is all we're dealing with here, but you just mentioned so many of those. What what causes? I I I have to assume that smoking's got to be yes. number 1. Spot on. So smoking and drinking are huge risk factors for mainly all head and neck cancers. Um, infection with cancer-causing strains of the human papillomavirus as well. Okay. And then just being in that high risk, you know, like I said, males and greater than 50 years old. Okay, so if you're male 50 and over or been smoking a long time, yeah. the HPV's in there as well. L let's talk about symptoms. Um, is it just like a lump that you would find, say, for breast cancer? Yeah, so it's a slew of symptoms, lumps and bumps in the head and neck region, oral lesions or ulcers, if your dentures aren't fitting right anymore. Ah. Um, skin lesions, of course, with a lot of those skin cancers. Sudden, you know, loss of your voice, hoarseness of voice or difficulty swallowing. Now, admittedly, you hear those symptoms and you're like, oh gosh, I, I've had a few of those. You right. know, I have a common cold, I have a lymph node that's inflamed or a, a traumatic laceration in my mouth if I'm eating and too quickly and not thinking. What I like to tell my patients is any of those symptoms that persist for about two to three weeks, okay. they're either getting worse or they're not getting better despite your attempts with home remedies. That's when you probably should mention that to your primary care physician or provider, your dentist, your dermatologist to see if something needs to be looked further into. Absolutely. So you're looking at something that persists for two to three weeks, doesn't get any better exactly. or maybe even worse. And so how, how are we treating these? I'm sure there are probably a, a wide array of treatments as there well. There is, yeah. At, at the time of diagnosis, we'll have um, big discussions with our tumor board conference if we get to that point. And it's going to be a wide range of surgical resection. Um, plus or minus reconstruction if that's needed, okay. uh, chemotherapy, radiation, um, and some of the typical treatments that you hear for cancer. Exactly. Uh, nothing too different when it comes to head and neck cancer. Exactly. But what about, we, we love preventative, right? Yes, <laughs> everyone, I know. everyone wants to get the, like, know this stuff before so they can treat it as early as possible. Yeah. Are there screenings for head and neck cancers? There aren't, unfortunately. You know, going to see your dentist regularly, keeping up on any skin lesions that you see with your dermatologist. Um, the human papillomavirus vaccine is now uh, able to be gotten up to the age of 45. Okay. So that's something that you can do to prevent not screenings, limiting, decreasing your smoking and drinking, mm -hmm. staying out of the sun uh, or protecting yourself from the sun. But unfortunately, we don't have any of those screenings <laughs> just yet. Oh, my goodness. So you've got everything in moderation, right? Exactly. I mean, the, the, you have those cocktails, sure. Have some sun time, sure. But let's limit that stuff to, protect, exactly right. to protect your body. How, what if someone watching right now may feel like they've got something like this going on in their life right now or know someone who does, what's the first step? Is it just going to your your general you know, physician? Yeah, I would. You know, you can, of course, look into things on the internet. There's cancer.gov, spectrumhealth.org, and there's a lot of patient-centered documents that you can find information on. Those can kind of get you in trouble and, yeah, and you get ahead of yourself, right? exactly. So I would definitely start with your PCP, your okay. dentist, okay. oral surgeon, whoever you're working with, and they can kind of uh, get you a referral if they think you need one. Absolutely. So your primary care physician, if you think this is something uh, that's happening right now, or uh, as you mentioned, your dentist, you know, yes. they, they do those checks. Those are important. Thanks so much for the time this yeah, morning. Absolutely. absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me. Learn stuff I didn't know before, which typically happens on these. Spectrumhealth.org, if you want to learn more. You can find all that information online. Hey, coming up,